Hello and welcome back. Dungeons and Dragons, let's talk about it. They have decided not to go through with the career destruction that would have been the OGL changes and yay. But this is a discussion, I want to put this one out to you. Do you think the damage is done? A lot of people and a lot of companies are moving away from D&D, a lot of people are really iffy about it, and there's a lot of other stuff going down with it too, which is oddly fascinating. I know people that have been playing for decades which are moving to Pathfinder and other sets and other things because they don't trust the company. For years, Dungeons & Dragons was kind of the background noise of Wizards. So it was Magic the Gathering was their cash cow. And then when 2020 happened, and then other things happened, Stranger Things happened, <laughs> literally, it kind of fell into the mainstream again. And suddenly it became far more profitable. So they wanted to kind of take control and monetize your IP. But they also wanted to monetize your creations because basically the rule set for D&D has always been a creative commons and they wanted to change that with one D&D. They roll back after a lot of pressure and a lot of people and it was the first time both sides, actually not even both sides, every side of the D&D community said what the hell are you doing, this is stupid. We're at a point where I'm watching people, like I said, I've known for years that have played D&D for years switch to different rule sets switch to different systems, play different games, and they're all moving from it. Financially, then, at the time of recording this, financially speaking, they're not doing well. Like, the stocks and shares are average at best, and that's kind of a worrying sign, so that might be out of date by the time this video comes out. It will be interesting to see what happens next, and I think once they went in and said we're going to change this and do that and do all this stuff, I think it put a lot of people's backs up. Because in the back of their heads, I think a lot of people are saying, what will they do next? How, what will they change? And is the future of D&D &D some crappy mobile apps? I mean... I used to play a long time ago, and I dip in and out online, but I don't play a huge amount now. But I know so many people that are so involved in that community, with these people, with these um, stuff. And I know people that have made beautiful things. I mean, without naming names, a very close friend of mine is an artist. And they created their own artwork. For, they sell their own artwork, inspired by their own D&D tables. And... Oh my god, it's gorgeous. It's like photorealistic renaissance art, and it, it's beautiful. The whole situation, I think, puts people's backs up, because me as someone who dips in and out, all I keep thinking is, what next? What will they do? How will they do it? What will they try and pull? What little piece of paperwork will they put in? And the whole list of stuff. I think if you're going to create, and I always say I think because literally this is my subjective opinion on the matter, the rules are public co uh, commons, they're creative commons, and them trying to say, well, actually, we want to make money out of your product that you've created just because you've used a rule set, but uh, is ridiculous. And I think that alone, that little red flag, or well, big red flag, was like the destruction and the, the thing of a lot of communities. A group that I know based in Scotland are switching their game to Pathfinder for the simple reason they don't trust wizards. And I think once you lose that trust, it's very hard to get it back. I think any trust on that level is difficult to get back, it's difficult to maintain, and once it's gone, it's gone. And they will have to work very hard to get people back, people playing again, and get people interested in the IP again. Because back of their heads, what are they going to do next? How are they going to do it? And what will they try and pull to get money out of your content? To quote another channel like earlier, 
will the future of D and D be crappy apps that require you know microtransaction apps that require you to spend X amount of money to get the new product, or will it remain the same? And D and D wizards and all of that should just stick to being publishers. That's it. Let fans do what they want. Let us create our own worlds. Let us do that and don't interfere because they're just the publisher. And they've published some terrible crap. The Magic School one was bizarre. And there's some great free modules that do Magic School so much better that people have created long before that one. And I do feel like sometimes they take influence from other people's work anyway. And that's a whole different video, but I've, I've seen that. And then you have Wizards artists making Magic the Gathering, literally tracing people's work from DeviantArt. Like, there is a whole list of stuff that has gone down with this company over the last five, six, ten years that just, I think, already got people's backs up. But now I think this has warned a lot of people off. I know people that are just sort of dipping their toe into the hobby and jumping to something else because of all of this. And that's sad, really. But for years, I mean, literally, Magic the Gathering was the cash cow for the company. And even Magic the Gathering players are kind of what the is happening. For, like, even their backs are up with this stuff now. So I, I wonder what the future will be. I wonder how this is going to happen. I wonder how people will react. I think it's going to take a lot of work. But like I said, I'm really interested in your opinions on this. Do you think they will build up that public trust again? Because it's just this bizarre situation. And just, you know, they rolled back everything, didn't make the changes. But people are like, what? well, you tried to do this. What will you do next? So tell me what you think in the comments below as always, and I will talk to you guys later.